halftime. Kiera Howard and Kennedy Manning, the aforementioned, as Autumn Phillips for the right wing. Her three ball is up no good. Loose ball rebound taken out of there and controlled by Young Harris. Augusta in a man-to-man. -man. To my offer. Likes the defensive assignment. They work the ball into the paint. And it's lost out of bounds. And they'll say kicked out of bounds by Young Harris. Looked from this vantage point as if it was off of Augusta, but we'll take it. And we've got a scoreless game. Your officials work in this one. Krista Couch, Eric Harris, and Rob Kelly. They have the assignment. Sanctioned by the Peach Belt Conference. Now to get it down low to Kennedy. It's deflected away. Autumn Phillips kicks it back over the other side to Kiera, who has to run it down. Left side. Looking for someone, nobody available. She comes to Kiera with eight on the shot clock. That's Monet Florence launching from way downtown. Nope. And looking to run are the Mountain Lions. With the basketball, that's Trinity Edwards. Now Griffith. Johnson. Shot clock at eight, the pull up. It's good. Trinity Edwards, 5'6", junior out of Brookhaven, Georgia. Has the first field goal of the ball game. To my offer, clanks that one off the front iron. Easy rebound for Young Harris, and here they come. Looking to turn the corner, nothing there. They get it down low, and the ball deflected out of bounds, and this time, it looked like it was off Young Harris, but maybe that's the makeup call for the previous one. As Autumn Phillips tying up the shoelaces, they'll allow her the time to get that done. Posting up and scoring. Arribano with the first field goal. Sixth leading scorer on her team. Averaging just three points a game, so that's a big opening salvo by her as they lead it four to nothing. And a turnover gives the ball back. So Celeste Stewart, the interim head coach of Augusta, She's up early off the bench. She surveys that pressure defense. Broken into the front court. In the right corner, they'll reset. On the dribble drive. Looking for an opportunity to penetrate. They do to the basket. That's too strong. Loose, loose ball, rebound picked up. And a missed bunny shot put up there by Johnson. And here comes Augusta. Looking to get on the board as they trail four to nothing. Monet Florence from way downtown. Bang. Uh, Monet Florence knocking home the triple. Penetration and a kick out. Kennedy runs it down. See if they can get it back inside, they do. Kennedy Manning with the lefty hook. That's too strong. And she gets shoved out of bounds. No whistle. They're open underneath. They didn't see it. Now left wing for three. And that's good. Burying the deep try. That's Searles. Kalen Searles out of Sugar Hill, Georgia, the junior. As a team, they shoot just 25% from long range. That's another welcome sign for head coach Lindsey Huffman. Augusta pairing another one. That's Monet Florence. So she missed her first three ball and answered quickly with two consecutive to cut the lead down to one. 
5.08 left to play. Opening quarter. We'll have the under five timeout on the next stoppage of play. Searles gives it up to the right side. Jump shot off the front iron, no good. Florence with the loose ball. And Johnson and she battling for it. And held ball, possession arrow in favor of Augusta University. will have the possession when we return. 4.48 left to play, and the Jaguars trailing by one. Good look at the Augusta University bench as they get the instructions from Celeste Stewart. As we had a little trivia going on during the break as well, one of the members of the stats team has stepped up to the plate, both in the military appreciation event that we had last week and here today as well as giving some students an opportunity to win some prizes. Fabulous prizes provided by our sponsors here. We appreciate them for being on board. This is Jaguar basketball. The 23 season just has a few games remaining. And the next one is a big one, ladies and gentlemen, as we're home on Wednesday night as we'll play host to USC Aiken. It's a 5.30 p.m. affair. You want to get here early. The space will be limited. And then we're on the road a week from today for returning home to close out things with the senior day activities. We'll be on the road next Saturday and a week from Wednesday. And then two Saturdays from now on February the 25th, we close it out with senior day and Clayton State is the opponent. So just two home dates remaining. This is breast cancer awareness and also a record breaking attendance day planned for the folks here in the Augusta area. Pull up jump shot, Autumn Phillips, and the three balls are raining from way downtown. Autumn Phillips with the triple. Big bucket for Autumn. She gets in the scoring column. Phillips had 18 points, two rebounds, and three assists in that victory, the road win against Lander. She's rounding into shape as we head toward the postseason. Into the post, Johnson turns and faces off the window, no good. Loose ball rebound pulled out by Alford. Kiara Howard pressing the issue, kicks it out. Around the horn, now Kennedy in the post against Johnson. Lefty hook off the side of the backboard. So Johnson recognizing the moves of Kennedy Manning and keeping her on the wing. That's a travel no call into the bucket goes Searles. Searles. So we're deadlocked at nine. Monet Florence rises and fires. A quick heat check for her. Searles, an aggressive guard taking it inside to Johnson. Howard reaches in and commits the personal foul there. Shabaria Jennings will check in. Got a chance to sit down with Shamaria for an upcoming feature that we hope to have for you later on this season. Perimeter jump shot in the air and it bottoms. Mackenzie Johnson. So Johnson tickles the twine. She is the leading scorer for her team, averaging 17.7 points a game and 13 rebounds amongst the tops in the conference. Dribble drive, Autumn Phillips kicks it out to Florence, down low. Malia Grace back on the floor. And a troweling violation on the perimeter by Alford. So the former Peach Belt Conference Player of the Week, 
to my offer with the turnover. the three from there that left elbow wasn't there so now they'll drive to the basket loose ball picked up by autumn phillips nobody out ahead so she'll slowly bring it to the front court now she picks up the steam drives takes it inside blocked by searles back the other way that's jamari frederick who finds her teammate slashing and dashing trinity edwards with her second field goal trinity edwards on the season, third leading score, eight and a half a game, and four and a half rebounds. Jennings with the mid range pull up. Rhea Fullwood comes in for Augusta. She's on the floor with Jennings. Phillips, who pulls up from the left side. Grace gives it back to Phillips and ball through her hands and stolen away. Here comes Frederick in the front court. Goes left side for the three. Just glances off the front iron, rebounded. Fullwood ahead to Offord. Offord drives and she gets lassoed and drop to the floor that Clint L. Bryant court that could smart so we got 90 seconds left we're in the opening quarter and offer will go to the line to shoot two to my offered at the line for Augusta the leading scorer on the team averaging 13.1 a game Second leading rebounder at five a contest. She made the first and missed the second one. Yamani Paul now on the floor for Augusta. She comes in from Malia Grace. Had very limited amount of time on the floor there. There's another drive and a dump. The old school pick and roll. Led to a foul right to my offer. So Young Harris breaking us down in their offensive flow. Small sample size here in this first quarter, but uh, a lot of talent in this Peach Belt Conference for sure. This team with a sub-500 record both overall and in league play. The first free throw comes up short. Dusty Oba who makes the second one. She's out of Queensland, Australia. Now Augusta trailing by four. Fullwood to Phillips. Paul is posting up in the paint. Jennings now offered. Around the horn with the passing game. Now to get it in the ball. She likes that mid-range jumper and she knocks it home. Imani Paul. Paul providing some bench points. Paul scoring five points off the bench along with three rebounds. And there's a follow-up inside by Johnson. Johnson's second field goal comes at the 22-second mark. Lead remains four for Young Harris. Important game for Augusta, as all of them are down this stretch, trying to get that seeding position, the best seeds. Obviously get weaker opponents when you come down to the conference tournament. Pull-up jump shot, Autumn Phillips, front iron again. Now the breakout, and the 
pass came up the floor, but uh, the time had run out and expired in the opening quarter of play. We played 10 minutes inside of the Christenberry Fieldhouse. Augusta University trails Young Harris 16 to 12 on the Peach Belt Sports Network. University, an experience like no other. We have a unique, compelling story that deserves the to be The first quarter highlights come we in your way. Perimeter jump shot knocked down by the Mountain Lions, and then they work the ball inside to show that they have the inside-out game working early. Monet Florence was the hot shooter for Augusta in that first quarter. She knocked down a couple long-range bombs. And Young Harris taking care of business as they shot 7 to 15 from the floor, 46.7%, and 1 of 3 from distance. 16 to 12 is our score, just underway, second quarter. That'll remain Mountain Lion basketball. On the inbounds, the deep try, rebounded by Jennings. She's got outstanding leaping ability. She, along with uh, Yamani Paul, talking about Shamaria Jennings, and Yamani Paul both played ball, started playing basketball somewhat late. In the sixth grade, they just started playing recreationally. And in the case of Yamani, it was middle school. The coach said, you got to be out here. And she came out and showed what she was made of right from the start. So we've got the Twin Towers out there for Augusta. Nice move by Johnson, and she scores again. Johnson's third field goal. She's got six. Beautiful play to Kennedy Manning. So Manning's first field goal comes here in the second quarter. And Autumn Phillips taking care of business. Phillips' second field goal, she's got five. Quick shot up there by Young Harris. This might be a good opportunity for Augusta as they continue to keep the pace moving quickly here in this second stanza. Get it down low to Johnson. Beautiful fake and a foul on Yamani Paul. Her first is Augusta's first foul. Checking in for the Mountain Lions, number four, Kaylin Searles, and number 23, Trinity Edwards. In the game for Augusta, number one, Monet Florence, number 12, Tamaya Alford. At the line for the Mountain Lions, Mackenzie Johnson. So Johnson at the line. Second Mountain Lion to head to the line. Down a pair. Johnson on the season, the 75% free throw shooter. Kennedy Manning with the left hand. 
Talk to Kennedy about patenting that move. Virtually automatic with that lefty hook. Ambidextrous. Off the ball fake. They swing it around to Searles. Right side. Ova tried to find someone underneath. Not available. Deflected out of bounds. Off Augusta. It'll be Young Harris basketball. Oba gets the high ball screen. Now they swing it around the horn. Five seconds on the shot clock. Double team. Florence and Manning defensively against Johnson. Extra opportunity as Searles, a good rebounding guard, pulls that one down off for Alford. Now for the perimeter. Oba side rim with that one, rebounded, and here they come. Monet Florence with the basketball. Yamani Paul drives. Goes to the reverse move, counted, and a foul. Yamani Paul, the versatile performer, can do a little bit of everything. A Swiss Army knife out there. She can defend. She can shoot with either hand, and she showcases it there. And a gorgeous reverse move. Shoot from distance. Post up, pass the ball, sees the entire floor, and her game is just continuing to improve under Celeste Stewart. In her first season here in Augusta. This is the free throw there. And we're deadlocked at 20. Just the second tie in our ball game. Off the drive, the bucket. Nice move. That is Jamari Frederick. Frederick, the sophomore out of Blythewood, South Carolina, attended Spartanburg Methodist. Spartanburg Methodist, always a great JUCO program over the years. Stepping through, Alford banks it in. Maya Alford goes Tim Duncan on him. She banks that one home for her first field goal. Leading score for Augusta. Tamaya now with three. Searles. And there was a, some contact. Imani Paul will pick up the personal foul. Checking in. Bria Fullwood will check out, or check in rather, and Yamani Paul will lead the proceedings. 22 all, and five second violation. We'll give the ball over to Augusta. So the Jaguars with the basketball looking to take the lead. Their biggest lead has been two in this game. Back to the 424 mark of the opening quarter. Here's Kennedy Manning again in the spin cycle. Rinse and repeat for Kennedy Manning. Ball deflected, and to my offer, just picked up number two. So Tamaya will have to leave the game. And Shamaria Jennings will return. Seconds on the shot clock, driving, and that shot falls. Lily Griffith with the field goal, the junior of Cherokee High School. We 
have a timeout on the floor. 4.56 left to play. An exciting game thus far. We're deadlocked at 24 on the Peach Belt Sports Network. The University, an experience like no other. All right, and we're back. Clint L. Bryant Court, we're courtside. Get a good look at the Jaguar cheerleaders with the Jags cheer. Always a fan favorite here. Again, this is Peach Belt Conference basketball. So we're, we're also live on YouTube as well. So great opportunity for you to check in and tell your friends. It might be slightly challenged by the internet to get on their phones and, and find the YouTube feed of this one and our second game. Breaking the attendance record is Kennedy Manning will not get the kind roll. The iron is unkind to Kennedy. Felt the contact, knew exactly what she wanted to do with the basketball, got it in with the right hand quickly. Just did not get that, that uh, forward momentum to get it going downhill. So Manning with seven now in the quarter. Second leading score on the team, averaging 12 points. Shoots it at 67, excuse me, 68.7% on the season. Just under 68, 69%. As she knocks down a pair here, and the Jaguars have the lead. This is our fourth lead change in the game. And it ties the Augusta University Jaguars' largest advantage at two. Searles rises and fires. Back iron no good. Ball tipped around. Who wants it? Searles does. So Searles hitting the boards over and over again. They've got her listed officially with one rebound. I got her for at least three. Opportunity for the Jags to extend the lead. Monet Florence steps through. Mid range jump shot is pure. Monet Florence, eight points now in the game. Two triples, and now the two ball falls as there's nearly a steal by Autumn Phillips. Got back in the hands of Johnson. Johnson spinning, trying to give Kennedy a piece of. Uh, kind of a return on her investment there as Kennedy did the same move a little closer to the basket on Johnson. She picks up the foul against Fullwood. So Jabria Fullwood reaching into the cookie jar on that one. We'll send Johnson to the line where she just knocked down a pair. The junior out of Chattanooga and Notre Dame High School. Johnson, 4-4 now from the line. Autumn Phillips having a rough shooting night or day to begin the proceedings. She's 2 of 7 now from, from the field. A 
Cuesta with the defensive stand. Now Phillips didn't get the ball screen she was expecting. Now Manny, lefty hook. That's Searles. Oh, she carried. Back in for the Lions, Maggie Abadio. Magdalene Adebayo back into the lineup for Young Harris. And we've got contact out on the perimeter. Lily Griffith will pick up the foul there. Phillips inbound. Fullwood gives it over to Kennedy. Kennedy steps underneath with the underneath move. The scoop is good. Kennedy Manning with a variety of moves. And now she's got the face of focus on there. Looking to see where that basketball is going if they try to get it inside. Kennedy Edwards. Edwards was trying to get to the corner, and Adebayo tried to assist her in you know, a legal screen, which will give the ball back to Augusta with their largest lead at four. Nearing the two-minute mark, Autumn Phillips, five points in the game. Fullwood gets to Kennedy. Kennedy against Adebayo. Lefty hook, no good. Jennings with the board, taken away from her. Now Florence has it, looking for somebody. That's Jennings. Out it goes to Phillips. Phillips surveys, comes up top. Now they swing it around the horn. Jennings, Fullwood on the strong drive, but her shot is just that. A little long on the attempt. Jaguars are fortunate to get that possession back. Shot clock at 12. There's Monet Florence, rises and fires. She's got it. Monet Florence, give me all three of those. Five here in the second quarter. Six in the opening stanza. She's got 11, first player for the Jags. Or second player for the Jags in double figures. Kennedy Manning has 10. Seven point lead. The Jaguars assuming control of this one. One and done for the Mountain Lions. Autumn Phillips, the point guard of the future, or she could be the two. And Kiara Howard, who's standing up as an assistant coach on the far sideline, as Monet looking for that deep try. Didn't, didn't work. Now we have Edwards. That's Griffith. Searles. Edwards. That was Winters. Shot clock at four. Three. Winters has it. Pulls up from deep. No good. Ball tipped out of bounds. Down goes Kennedy Manning. And it's going to stay down this way to Young Harris. Kenzie Johnson will come in, as will Frederick. Adebanyo leaves the, leaves the game, and as does Griffith. 30 seconds left. Difference of 10 seconds between shot and game clock. Down low, Johnson. Oh. Picked clean by Kennedy Manning. Defensive stop by Kennedy was huge. Now 10 seconds left in the first half. Jaguars already with their largest lead. Looking for more. Monet Florence rattles off no good. Ball tipped out. They've got enough time, but they didn't see it. And that shot would not have counted as we play 20 minutes on the Clint L. Bryant court. 
in Peach Belt Conference action and Augusta University in search of that 15th victory that they had all season long during the 21-22 campaign. They're halfway home as they lead it by 7, 33 to 26. This is Jaguar basketball and coming up in just a moment, it's my opportunity to visit with Monet Florence, the star sophomore guard for your Jaguars of Augusta University. Stay with us, everyone. And welcome to End to End. I'm Charles McNeil with Monet Florence, sophomore guard. Monet, you're from Florida, and I think you love the beach a little bit, huh? Uh, I'm more so a pool girl, but maybe oh. down at the beach a little bit. Okay, okay. So tell us a little bit about growing up in that environment versus living here in Augusta. Um, I would definitely say it's more busy, especially like during spring break in the summer. Um, but other than that, it's very chill like Augusta. Um, it's very family environment. Everybody knows everybody. Um, you can go around the street and go in any place possible. Yeah. Well, that's not that dissimilar from the Augusta area. I walk in people's houses all the time. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about your your parents. I understand they own a business. Yes, they own a food industry business. And they sell chicken, um, fish, and ribs. Okay. It's been around for a good minute. I'm maybe around 20 years or longer. I'm not really so sure about that. Well, I understand you worked in the business. What were some of your roles? Um, I was a cashier, a bagger. I would cup sauces. Really, wherever I was needed, except for cooking, because I wasn't there yet. Okay. But I know you ate a lot there, huh? Definitely. But how do you keep your, yourself in shape? Um, I have a hot metabolism, so that's one. Okay. But, but also just, like, doing little things like abs, um, running. Even if it's just uh, down and back here and there. Um, getting on a bike, low impact things. Mm -hmm. And when did your love for basketball start? It started around, I want to say like third grade. Okay. But I really didn't get into it till like fifth, sixth. And my friend was the one who inspired me to do so. She was very active for it and she loved the game. So it kind of just grew up. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like the sport of basketball. I love it with a passion. So talk a little bit about the early days for you in the game. When did you know you could possibly excel in this game, possibly even play college ball? Um, Definitely my 10th grade year when I was the most uncomfortable in my career. Um, I have transitioned from a four to a point guard, and that's a whole different like level of basketball. So it was just like, oh, this is something I really enjoy because not have not have I only played one position, but I've played almost the majority of them. So. And now being here at Augusta, you get that similar situation because <laughs> yes. you play sometimes underneath and sometimes out in the 2-3 zone defensively. Um, if you had your choice, you know, maybe you gain a couple of inches in height, would you rather play in, in the low post or you prefer to play out in the perimeter? Not in college. They got that one down here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I understand that. Okay, so let's talk about your recruitment here at Augusta University. Um, what was it like for you to make this your, the uh, school of your choice versus possibly going to one of the schools in Florida? There's so many of them. Um, during my recruitment time, it was still COVID. So recruitment was kind of uh, iffy. But I fell in love with Augusta because I felt very welcome here. And when I came, it was just like, I've been here before. It wasn't something new. I wasn't uncomfortable. The team um, always had something to ask me for, including me and everything. It was just, it felt like home. And what are some of the things you like to do off the floor? Um, I like to listen to music, if not, not be in my car listening to music. So, really listen to music. Okay, and, and when you're listening to music, are you listening to R&B, hip-hop, a little variety of both, a little jazz? What are you listening to, gospel? Um, a little bit of everything, but more so R&B. Okay, and who's, if someone would say on your team, they'd say, Monet's not listening to that. What's on your playlist that folks would be kind of surprised to hear? Some country. Okay, there you go. But well, we're learning more and more about Monet. Um, what's your favorite food? Wings, right now. Wings, you're on the wing tip, <laughs> and you're right here with me too. All right. So outside of that, um, let's talk a little bit about your your school work. What, what are your aspirations? What do you want to do when you finish up here at Augusta University? Um, right now, I'm still in the process of figuring it out. I just know it's something around finance in Orange County because I love doing math, and that was just something that 
She's a numbers girl. Monet Florence, end to end. My name is Haley Dowdy and this is my Augusta University story. I come from a small town, Ridge, Georgia. Not a lot of people know about it. It's very rural. When you're in the country, you don't have a lot of, of stuff to do, especially as a child. You can play outside, but I wasn't really big on the outdoors. I stayed inside and I watched cartoons. And so I never really drawed much. I just kind of watched and then I started drawing in middle school. So some of the specific artworks I did in the past, I drew a lot of anime, I drew a lot of just general cartoons. When I went from high school to college, do I wanna do animation? It's, do I was scared that if I did it, I would hate doing it, because I did it as a hobby and not as a career. And so I was very hesitant to go into the animation industry and go into school to, because I thought maybe I'd end up hating it and that I wouldn't be good enough to be at that point. And I started doing art classes and I went into the first class that we do animation history and fundamentals. And I actually handled a little bit of like each kind of section of animation in those classes and I loved it but if you're doing something you're passionate about you know this is what you want to do it feels like this is what you were put in this world to do and it's just a very liberating feeling and it's it gives you confidence like hey this is me this is what I'm doing and I'm proud of what I do Soulful, legendary in our own right, and undeniably funky. Home to an experience like no other. And nestled on the warm banks of the mighty Savannah River. Augusta is calling you. Welcome to a place of charm and opportunity. And a customized experience. Here we build, think, grow, and forge. Augusta University. An experience like no other.
Augusta University, an experience like no other. We are back at the Chris Berry Fieldhouse. First half highlights of this one, the women's contest, game one of our doubleheader. Young Harris, the opponent, and they got off to a fast start. They led by as many as six points in that first half of the game, but Augusta University walked them down with some outside shooting. And the, the answer came back to back as well. Only one made three for Young Harris in the game, while Augusta University dropped in four out of nine attempts from long range. Autumn Phillips rising up and firing on that one. Phillips, one of two from distance. Searles active inside. And Johnson, that's the one we got to keep an eye on in the second half. And she, along with a volume shooter in 23 Edwards. Edwards with four attempts. Johnson with eight shots of their team's 28. On the other side, you had Kennedy Manning and Monet Florence getting the balance of most of the shooting and Autumn Phillips. They combined for 23 of the shots put up by Augusta in that first half. But as we look at the uh, individual numbers, as you watch the highlights here, it was a tide of quarters. In that opening quarter, the Jaguars trail 16 to 12. In that first quarter, the Jaguars only shot 4 of 14, 28.6%. In that second quarter, though, they opened things up 9 of 16 from the floor. That's 56.3%. Shooting 43% for the first half, 13 of 30. And uh, 4 of 9, as I mentioned, from long range, 3 of 5 from the line. While Young Harris, on the other hand, they came in in that first quarter on fire. 7 of 15 shooting, that's 46.7%. And then in the second quarter, the clamps got put on them by the Augusta Jaguar defense. Three of 13 shooting turned into a 23% shooting second quarter. But they did knock down four free throws. Another key number was points off turnovers where the Jaguars had an 11 to nothing advantage in the first half. Paint points, we mentioned that at the very beginning. Would it be paint points for Augusta and or Young Harris, well, Young Harris with a slight advantage, 16 to 14 there. Second chance points also to the Mountain Lions, four to three. Fast break points to Augusta, three to two. And bench points, small sample size on both sides as uh, the Jaguars with a slim four to three advantage. The scoring in the opening quarter, as I mentioned, 16 to 12 was our score in favor of the Mountain Lions. The Jaguars fought back as AU with a 21 to 10 run in that second quarter, opened up the seven point advantage for them. Your leading scores, first for the visitors, it is Mackenzie Johnson, their leading scorer, averaging nearly 18 points a game. She had 10 points and six rebounds in the first half. As for Augusta, we were paced by two players in double figures, Monet Florence with uh, three made triples out of six attempts, four of eight overall from the field. She finished up with 11 points and two rebounds in that first half. And then Kennedy Manning with 10 points and four rebounds. As Kennedy also had a block shot along the way. The Jaguars were out rebounded 24 to 12, but they kept their turnovers to a minimum, just two turnovers in the first 20 minutes of action. I think that is a season low for a first half of basketball for Celeste Stewart's team as they're being efficient with the basketball and, and definitely taking care of the ball is so pivotal as you prepare for tournament play and possibly an opportunity to make it to the NCAA tournament as well. This team is peaking at just the right time and uh, it's a good sign to see how they've matured. And again, it's a veteran group in that starting unit. In particular, Kennedy Manning and Kiara Howard, both grad students. Kennedy graduating at the end of the first semester here. Recently got her 1,000th point in her career as well. And uh, just a lot of positivity going on in Jaguar country. Well, we're about ready to begin the second half of play. As for Lindsey Huffman and the Mountain Lions, I think it's very simple. Allow Searles to do Searles things, rebound the basketball at that guard position, get the ball inside to Johnson and allow her to do work. And on the other side for Augusta, 
continue to feed and fan Monet Florence from distance and get the ball inside to Kennedy Manning and let her try to get Johnson into foul difficulty. So a look of focus by Kennedy Manning as she steps back on the floor. Monet Florence the same and the Jaguars will be coming right in front of us to start the second half with control of the basketball. Kiara Howard begins the second half on the floor. She sat out a good portion of that first half. Did the uh, senior captain or graduate student captain as that first shot is off, no good. Howard only played six minutes and 40 seconds. Had one foul, but uh, coach's decision to run with the, the younger group. Now driving, Searles bumps off Alford, takes her right into the paint and scores. Ooh. Searles is strong. She's got seven. Second possession for the Jaguars. Inside to Kennedy Manning. She got shoved, no call. Now Autumn Phillips rises and fires, and she knocks home a triple. That is the fifth made three-pointer. Second one from Autumn Phillips. She's got eight. Jaguar lead is eight. 36-28, and there's another block for Kennedy, her second. But Jax Johnson gets it back, tries to pump it down low to Adebanyo. She lost it out of bounds with the help of the Jaguars, so it'll be Mountain Lion basketball. 8.50 left to play. Still inbound. And a pull-up by Searles. And the iron is very kind to her. I think it cut, touched every portion of the, the rim before dropping home. So Searles with a quick four. She's got nine now. Autumn Phillips picked up her dribble, needed help. Kennedy Manning off to Kiara Howard. Nice through two. Misses the bunny. Rebound. Offord lays it up and down. To give Offord a steal and a bucket on that one. Offered the leading scorer, averaging 13 points a game. She's got five. Edwards. Johnson. Adebanyo. Now the drive to the cup. Came up short. Phillips. Here it is, Kennedy working. Kennedy Manning, beauty. So Manning has a variety of moves in her repertoire and pulling them all out here today. 10 point lead, the largest for the Jaguars as they get the loose ball rebound off the Searles miss. Looking to press the issue to my offer. Outside to Howard. Florence drives the lane. Dribble handoff, and Manning fumbles it out of bounds. That was going to be the easiest basket she's probably had all season long with a clean catch. Coach Celeste Stewart encouraging her. Again by Kennedy Manning. That's her third, and there's a steal. Searles threw it away. Autumn Phillips. Dribble handoff. Offered. Now Kennedy looking around for the double team. Drop, step, jumper too strong. Griffith. Johnson, back to Griffith for three. Rattles out, no good. Adebanyo, misfires. She gets a second try. No good. So three tries down there on the offensive end and no baskets for young Harris. Shot clock already at 12. It moves quickly on that possession. Dribble drive, 
Kiara Howard misses it, then chases it down into the corner. And last touch by Howard. It'll be Young Harris basketball. Yamani Paul will check in, as will Jabria Fullwood. Out goes Autumn Phillips and Kennedy Manning for Lindsey Huffman. She takes out Lily Griffith. And she'll replace her on the floor with Carly Winters. Searles. Johnson, fall away. Flying over the top, Adebanyo. Edwards, Searles, looks at Winters. Now she'll dribble that way. Johnson, and once again, the second time in the game, she's called for a carrying violation. Monty Paul, pass is thrown too far, but she retains it out to Monet Florence for three. Monet Florence is locked in. Fourth made triple, 14 points in the game for Florence. The Jaguars up by 13. This is Augusta's largest lead. Johnson, recognizing her team needs some offensive flow, puts one up. Just barely missed that one. And now it's Howard's turn. Florence once again from the corner. This is strong. Rebound. Offered high off the window. Tamaya Offered. Four points in the quarter. Seven points overall. And Lindsey Huffman has seen enough. She calls a timeout with 4.18 left to play in the third period. Ladies and gentlemen, we have our media Got the timeout on the floor. 4.18 left to play in the Jaguars, leading it by 15. champions as they're here on this breast cancer awareness game and break the attendance record afternoon for Augusta University 418 left to go we're in the third period Charles McNeil courtside here at Clint L. Bryant court Jag Elite to my left the cheerleaders in pink to my right and the Jaguar women's basketball team Showcasing their skills for the youngsters to see. What a great thrill it is for the middle schoolers to get an opportunity to get out to a college game right here in their backyard. Be celebrated in that way as well. Part of the spoils of victory. 4.15 left. 15-point game. That's Winters. Guarded by Florence. Gets it into Johnson. Johnson elevates. Short on the shot attempt. Yamani Paul and Howard trying to stop her. Kept alive. Underneath, Searles. Is that not three seconds? Finally. Finally, the call is registered. And now we have... A timeout on the floor. 45-30 the score. This is Jaguar basketball on AugustaJags.com.
Augusta University. An experience like no other. The Augusta University Jaguars with Monet Florence's 14 points and Kennedy Manning's 12. With a little help from Autumn Phillips who has eight and seven for Tamaya Alford. Leading Young Harris who came in with a record of 10 and 11, six and seven in Peach Bell Conference play. Augusta looking for win number 15. They've got 14 victories and nine setbacks on the season. Seven and six in Peach Bell Conference play. So again, when you look at that six and seven and the seven and six, you know, Young Harris wants this win. A chance to even up the score with AU. Kiara Howard brings it in the front court. Kimani Paul. Paul back to Howard. Shot clock at 15. Offered. Dribble penetrate. Kicks it out. Paul stops and pulls up right there. The catch and shoot. Came up short. Now the right side. Winners for three. Carly Winners. And she's got that in her bag. The senior out of Gainesville. And we've got a turnover. So Autumn Phillips returns to the lineup. Jabria Fullwood on the floor. To my offer. Monet Florence and Yamani Paul. That's the five on the floor for Augusta. Oba throws it away. Autumn Phillips feels the bump. Now she'll reset the offense. Deaf ball handler is Autumn Phillips. Able to knock down shots as that one is a kickball. The sideline out of bounds to Augusta. We got 2.49 left. We're in the third period. Fifteen on the shot clock. Fullwood turns the corner and forgot something. Picked up by Yamani Paul. Paul turns and faces, goes off the window and scores. A look of confidence by Yamani Paul as she knocks down her sixth point of the game. Jaguar lead is back to 14, and that's a carry once again against Searles. Don't know if she's been getting that all season long, but apparently not. She looks a little perplexed with each call by the official. Jamie Manning. Renee Florence. Yamani Paul. Paul loses the control of the basketball. Picked up shot clock at 10. Tons of time. And there is Autumn Phillips saying, I'm not worried about the shot clock. I got three. So six in the second half, 11 points now for Autumn Phillips. Sensational sophomore. Johnson off the window. So Johnson's first points of the second half come at the 129 mark. She's got 12. Her team's down by 15. Renee Florence. Kennedy Manning to my offer. Autumn Phillips. Phillips working against Johnson. Takes it inside. There's contact. No whistle. And Johnson with the board. Looking for the hit ahead. Over the top. Oba. Chased down from behind by Florence and out of bounds. Back in the game for the Jaguars. Please welcome number three, Kiara Howard, and number 15, Jabrila To my offer, back on the floor. Kiara Howard as well. Autumn Phillips and Yamani Paul check out. Monet Florence leaves the proceedings as well. Her third, it's Augusta's first foul of the third quarter. So 
substitution in the game, Coach Huffman. Checking in for the Mountain Lions, Kayla Ward. That's Kayla Ward checking in, the freshman out of Villa Rica. There's Oba. That's Oba's first field goal. She's got four now. Kennedy Manning steps through. Jumper just short. Winters. Johnson. Nice pass to Oba. Misfired on the shot attempt, kept alive. And deflected out of bounds off the right hand of Kennedy Manning. It'll be Mountain Lion basketball with 12.7 seconds left to go in the third. Imani Paul will check in and say to my offer, who has those two fouls from getting her third. Inbounds, and there's a foul. And who will that go on? It'll go against Kiara Howard, who will walk over and have a conversation with the official. Good look at Lindsey Huffman, head coach of the Mountain Lions. I want, but I'm just I think they're going to work through something here. All right, so we got a. Going to check the time. Apparently, the game clock did not start on time. Now let's take another look at that play. So the inbounds happened there. And as you can see, the clock did not move. The clock on your lower right did not move. Now we're watching in slow motion, so you have to take it under consideration. A little bit, and that's in normal action. So probably a couple of seconds off the clock, you would imagine. The foul occurred, maybe a second, second and a half. She turns the corner, there it is. Yeah, 1,001 or so. The officials seeing the same thing that you and I are looking at. A variety of answers, or, or angles that is, taken by our sensational student-led broadcast team. Nice block there by Kiara Howard as well. Much taller player is Johnson as she stepped right in and made the play. So we'll get the official count. They did take one second off, so I guess I was, I've been around the game long enough to figure out what one second looks like. And Johnson taking advantage of it to knock down the conventional three-point play. She's got 13 now to lead the mountain lines as she does all season long. Nine points for Searles, it's their second leading score. And there's Autumn Phillips to close out the third period in style. Three triples for Autumn Phillips. She has 14 now to tie Monet Florence for the team high. 12 points for Kennedy Manning. And there's a way that the third quarter comes to a close as she rises up and knocks it home. One more time, Kennedy Manning gets the assist and the bucket to Autumn Phillips, the sensational sophomore out of Fairburn. The Jaguars lead it by 13 on the Peach Belt Sports Network. Augusta University, an experience like no other.
discuss the University Jaguar cheerleaders and the pep band, all part of this breast cancer awareness game. Augusta University Jaguars, in case you just joined us earlier this week, they visited the Georgia Cancer Center to meet with the doctors and some of the patients there and spread love. Celeste Stewart, Lindsey Payton, Yogi Lee, the brain trust for this Jaguar women's program. There's a drop to the bucket. Left-handed layup is up and down. Kayla Ward, her first field goal, the freshman. Triple penetration, Howard. They knocked it off with Searles and out of bounds. Obad did. Mountain Lions coming off a loss on Wednesday. Last time out, Mountain Lions lost that home game against Columbus State, 94 to 81. And there's another one for Autumn Phillips. So Phillips, all of her field goals here in the second half have been from distance. She's got four made triples and one in the first half as well. That's five overall. 17 points to lead the way after an 18-point performance and the Jaguars' victory on Wednesday. The foul is on Augusta. Autumn Phillips. Ward with back-to-back -back field goals has an opportunity to step up to the line and add to her scoring. So then for the Mountain Lions, Trinity Edwards. After she was in the lane, Faelma. Yeah, I guess so. Free throw, no good. With a 58% free throw shooter. Jump shot. Up and no good. So 12-point game. Jaguars' largest lead, it was 17. Triple penetration. Johnson driving the lane against two defenders. And let's see. Officials will have a conference there, make sure they've got the same call. And an offensive foul is what's registered. It's a great job of sticking to it by the Jaguar defense. A double team results in the turnover for Young Harris. Yeah, just a matter of who it was. So it looks like we may be Gonna figure out they're gonna look at it again. See if we can figure it out. Let's take another look at it here. So we had the drive by Johnson. And stepping in there, Kiara Howard to take the charge. Yamani Paul adding a little bit as well. Here it is, another look. Beautiful angle here. And Kiara in place, ready to take the body up. And that's the experience. So many games she's played, so important to the Jaguar success, not only this season, but over the last few seasons, as they continue to grow and build. And now we're back to live action. Beautiful pass, Kennedy Manning finds your money, Paul. Eight points for Paul. Jaguars back out in front by 14. Oba, backdoor feed thrown through. Searles has it. Kicks it out. Now it's Johnson. Beautiful ball fake. And now Oba from deep. My offer. Lene Florence, when the Jaguars are shooting from the inside out and knocking shots down like that, there's not many teams that can stop them. Beautiful three ball there. Seven points in the second half. 11 points for Paul. 
four players in double figures for the Jaguars. 61 to 44. Talked about that momentum you're trying to build. Get closer to that uh, the upper echelon inside the conference. Adebayo back on the floor. Johnson at the line. So Johnson out of Chattanooga, Tennessee. 15 points now in the game. Averaging nearly 18 a contest. Manning with the screen. Passes errant. Saved there, so now it's a five on four situation. Move the ball around the horn. Monet well, Florence driving the lane, and once again, I think we've got a clock issue. And they're going to reset it again. Coach Huffman wondering why there's going to be more point and more time put on the clock. They put 25 seconds on the clock. It'll be Jaguar basketball. Just inside of seven minutes remaining. Alfred thought about the three ball. Kennedy Manning driving, and it's blocked by Johnson. Johnson said that was just clean block. Official said, no, you got body. So 61-46 is our score. Manning was two of two before that miss at the line. So Manning, who averages 12 points a game, has 13 now. Charles on the dribble handoff, gives it to Johnson. Yamani Paul right there to grab hold of it. And a defensive stop by Yamani Paul. She anticipated the spin move, grabbed the basketball, caused the held ball, and that'll give the ball on the alternate possession arrow back over to Augusta. Augusta University baseball team and softball team were scheduled for action because of the inclement weather. Those games have been postponed to a later date to be determined. That's Alford between the leg dribble, steps through the free throw line, keeps her pivot foot set. Now Howard, six seconds. Now down to three seconds. Phillips rises up. Shot comes up no good, kept alive by Manning. Howard has it. It's 20 seconds on the shot clock and they'll run it again. There's a beautiful pass, and a lefty layup is good. Howard connecting with Manning on the field goal. 15 now for Manning. From the corner, Ward. Ward doing all her damage here in the fourth period. She's got six. There's the lob over the top. And we've 
We've got the under five timeout with 448 left to play. The Jaguars are up big. Team somewhat close. Autumn Phillips dialing it up and ringing the bell. So a three point shootout here at the Christenberry Fieldhouse as Autumn Phillips missed the steal there. Ward, but they're one of the rare attempts in the paint here in the second half as Phillips drills that one. And Autumn Phillips having a night of nights, five of seven from long range, 17 points for Phillips coming off that 18 point performance and the victory over Lander. Autumn Phillips coming into her own and when she scores the basket, it opens up that interior game for people like Paul and Grace and, and the rest of the, the group. Oh, nearly thrown in the backcourt. Howard saved it. Manning, cross court to Howard. Into the post. Paul, that one rattled out. Good look there. Ward just watches the ball go out of bounds. Lack of concentration there for a moment for Kayla Ward. My offer. Manning. Paul. Travel. Twenty-five point advantage. Three forty left to play. Yamani Paul will check out, and Monet Florence will check back in. Florence was the leading scorer in the first half with eleven points. Only one field goal here in the second. She's got fourteen. Ward misses the close-range jumper. Shot clock at 10. Here's the ball screen. Oba. Beautiful pass by Howard. That shot misfired, tipped by Howard. She says, give it back to me. Instead, Phillips will grab hold. 2.45 left. Manning. Spin move. The lefty layup. No good. Rebound by Johnson to Oba. One against three, so she'll slow it up and wait for Searles. Right side to Ward. Three-pointer in the air from the elbow. Rattles out, no good. There's a reach in and a foul committed on the perimeter. So Dusty Oba picking up the personal. That's her third. The team's third. And we've got a timeout on the floor. 2.23 left. Remember, coming up, nationally ranked. Augusta University men will be in action. And we're 
look forward to seeing them down the home stretch. It should be an exciting game against Young Harris. Young Harris coming in with a outstanding record as well, so it should be a good game in this one. But this actually was a three-point barrage by the Jaguars, countered every so often by the interior play by Young Harris. But when you're going three against two, the numbers are in your favor, and the Jaguars have taken full advantage of that. And then this contest, shooting 10 of 17 from long range in the game, two of three here in the fourth period from distance, and four of six overall from the field. So an efficient shooting game for the Jaguars. And not only is it efficient in that regard, it's also taking care of the basketball. Only five turnovers in the game for Augusta University. And we will be excited to talk with Celeste Stewart, have a brief conversation with her at the conclusion of this one. And I know she'll have a big smile on her face because this is a complete performance on the part of her Jaguar women. She's got to hold on for this 222. It's not over yet. Florence, Phillips, Howard, now Manning. All five players have touched it. Monet Florence on the catch and shoot. Halfway down, it bounced out. The lead is still 25. Reached the two-minute mark. From the wing, the fling. Rattles off, no good. Rebounded, lefty layup, no good. Tipped around. Adebanyo will go to the line. And she was fouled in the paint. So we've seen Kennedy Manning in foul trouble earlier this season. That's her first personal foul. Kennedy's played over 30 minutes in this game. Adebayo knocks down a pair. Peachtree Ridge High School. The sophomore has four now. Scored a game, scored early in the game, that is. And been held in check until those free throws. Edwards guarding Phillips. It's a kickball. Griffith is actually on Phillips. It's Edwards guarding Florence. Florence open for a moment. Now she'll drive to the bucket. That's blocked by Johnson out of bounds. Second foul on Kennedy Manning. Foul on the Jaguars, Kennedy Manning. That's her second, the team's fourth of the quarter. Adeline shooting two with Kennedy Johnson. Checking back in for the Mountain Lions, Lily Griffin. Kenzie Johnson, 16 points in the game. Make it 17. Right there on her average, 17.7 points a game. She's got 18. But the Jaguars still out in front comfortably. Just under a minute left. We're going to keep it right here. 
Remember, immediately following this one, Les Stewart will join me courtside. We'll get a chance to visit with the interim head coach. We'll even up the uh, total of her predecessor. We'll get a chance to visit with her. She, there she is talking with her team. We continue to stay locked in all the way to the finish of this one. Darren Douglas will join me in the next game as our color analyst for the men's contest as 11th ranked Augusta University coming off a loss earlier this week at Lander. Another one of their arrivals will look to find his way into the victory column. Dipmetris will. As we've got a foul against Griffith, number 12 in purple. That is her second, team's fourth. <laughs> Phillips will inbound. And they're going to foul her. Look to extend this game. And they'll send the captain to the line, Kiara Howard. 74% free throw shooter, 52 of 70 on the year. Second of two. Uh, timeout call by the Mountain Lions. So once again, want to remind everyone coming up, the Jaguars following this victory, we hope, over the next 53 seconds, if they can secure the victory, they return to action on Wednesday. As they'll be on the road for a pair of games before returning home. See, they'll be here for our Wednesday contest against USC Aiken. That's our next contest. And then we head out on the road for back-to-back -back games on Saturday and the following Wednesday before closing out the home slate on Senior Day. That's Saturday, February the 25th at 1.30 p.m. So make your plans to be here. If you can get by for the men's contest, that'll start 30 minutes following this one. And then shortly thereafter, we will have a Wednesday affair that I'm certain will be packed. That's USC Aiken and Augusta. The first game at their place was epic. So the same should be the case in the pivotal game. We were just tied on the men's side with USC Aiken for first place just a couple of weeks ago as Johnson knocked down the triple. So never saying die is Mackenzie Johnson and her squad as Johnson now with 21. And the lead is down to 10. 26 seconds left. Kiara Howard at the line. Looking to salt this one away. Back in for the mountain line is Trinity Edwards. Howard on the season, averaging nine points a game. She only has one today. In limited action. Howard now playing 20 minutes of basketball. One rebound, but has six assists. Big free throws there for Howard. The Jaguars up by 12 with 26 seconds remaining. The young Harris team, the men's team already on the floor. They're in the far corner underneath the Large replay monitor. The pep band on the other side, diagonally across from them. And you, tuned in wherever you are around the globe, we welcome you to AugustaJags.com and the Peach Belt Sports Network. I'm Charles McNeil. Jaguar women in search of their eighth victory in the Peach Belt Conference, just 26 seconds away. 
Young Harris with the basketball, pulling up from Steph Curry range. Obama misfired on that one, and now Autumn Phillips fouled, and the crowd's not going to be happy with that. Searles picking up her first foul. Team's fifth, and Autumn Phillips will head to the line. Third leading scorer for on the team, Phillips averaging 10 and a half points, four rebounds, and two assists a game. Also in a, a steal along the way for Autumn Phillips. But today, and for the last two games, Autumn Phillips has been on a mission. 18 points in the win over Lander by five on Wednesday, and today, a more lopsided affair, Phillips providing great offense with 12 points, her first attempts at the line in this game. 76% free throw shooter, knocks it home. So Autumn Phillips equals the total she had on Wednesday with 18. Good look at the sophomore, soft-spoken. She buries a pair. 19 for Autumn Phillips. Three-point attempt by Winters is no good. Five seconds, and they'll bring it to the front court and dribble out the clock. The Jaguars equaling their win total from last season. Their 15th victory comes in their 25th game on the year. 24th game of the year. The Jaguars reign supreme in this one. Congratulations. Augusta University basketball with another quality win against the Peach Belt Conference opponent, Young Harris. And Celeste Stewart and company can celebrate the victory over Young Harris here today. So a wonderful victory, double-digit win, and with it, comes a lot of fun, a lot of activity to come. So let's do it. He'll join us here in a moment. And we'll get a chance to visit with her and get her thoughts on this victory. It was not a wire-to-wire -wire victory by any means. Young Harris jumped out to a 16-12 to advantage in the first, first quarter. And then Augusta bounced back with 20 in the second. 20 in the third and 16th in the fourth period as they controlled things over the last three quarters and did so enough for a victory. 69-55, your final score, your leading scores for the Jaguars in this one. 19 points for Autumn Phillips. She had two assists and four steals in 35 minutes of action. It was 15 points for Kennedy Manning, 14 for Monet Florence, and 11 points for Yamani Paul as we had four players in double figures. And we're pleased to be joined now by the interim coach of your Jaguars. That is Celeste Stewart. She's alongside. This is our breast cancer awareness game. Coach, and we always talk about the significance outside of basketball of the things that you and your team have been involved with. And I saw earlier this week you had the opportunity to go and spend some time at the Georgia Cancer Center. Yes, we did. Um, it was a great opportunity, I think. You know, it gives us perspective. And um, we're definitely planning to go back and volunteer and, and all those good things as well. But um, I told our players we're playing for more than just ourselves. Like, it's about the cause. It's about uh, raising awareness. And, you know, we've all been impacted in some type of way. So um, we're glad that we are able to bring some awareness today. Well, not only did you bring awareness to that, but you also brought awareness to how you put together a basketball team that can play well in those final three quarters. In particular, what a difference between the first quarter shooting and the second quarter shooting of this game as you guys were able to put 20 on the board, hold them to 14. When you look back at that the first quarter, second quarter, and not only on the offensive end for us, but also on the defensive end for us, holding them to 23% in that second period. That was pivotal to the success of our team today. Yes, um, it starts with our defense. and. I don't feel like we came out strong enough in the first quarter, but we was able to turn it around in the second, and we go as our defense goes. And, you know, we were sharing the ball really well. We had 15 assists, 
Um, I like to see that when that assist number is high. And not only that, but the assist to turnover ratio was great as well for your team. Only two turnovers in the first quarter, of the, in the first half of the game. How, how do you go about preparing your team not to turn the ball over for a team that has had some, some issues there in the past? Be confident, be decisive in what we do. Trust the process, trust what we do. Um, if we do those things, we should be fine. Yeah, and they, they were hustling all over the place in this game as well. One of the things we noticed was the, the amount of times that the players hit the floor in this game, and uh, we got great re return on that because once we got to the ball loose, we were able to kick it out to an open player, and Monet Florence and Autumn Phillips really put on a shooting performance. Yes, they did, and uh, we take pride in our defense, and so if we're not playing well defensively, like that can affect us. So I think it started with our defense, and then we was able to – knock down shots we've been waiting for that moment um, but I think patience was key and also trusting the process and trusting and believing in yourself so final thing I have for you coach as you prepare for USC Aiken coming up on Wednesday obviously the victory over Lander on Wednesday this past Wednesday and then this win here continues to show what this team is made of now 15 victories you equal the total of wins you had the last uh, season and uh, the sky's now the limit for this team Yes, um, we have to be ready to go as every game is it's a tough one. Every game is a tough one, and it's going to be vital that we defend home court. Um, we did not have a good showing the last time we played Aiken, so um, hopefully we can turn the corner and um, get a win on Wednesday. Yeah, we know it's going to be a big crowd here, and we need you to come out and support. The sixth man needs to be here as we get ready for a big conference game this Wednesday. And, Coach, thanks so much for your time, as always, and congratulations on your 15th win of the year and your seventh win. I make that the eighth win in conference play. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. That's Celeste Stewart, the interim head coach of your Jaguars, as they are victorious in this game this afternoon by a final count of 69 to 55. So we wind things down. Let's run through the scoring once again. Four players in double figures. Autumn Phillips, along with uh, Yamani Paul, Kennedy Manning, and Monet Florence, all in double figures with the victory. Mackenzie Johnson led the way for Young Harris. She had 20 points and 15 rebounds in a losing effort. So Young Harris falls, and they will be themselves at home against North Georgia in the Battle of Blood Mountain. That's this coming Wednesday is their next contest. As for the Jaguars, once again, we will be in action on Wednesday against USC Aiken. Coming up next is the men's contest. It is 20 minutes away. The Jaguar men, 11th ranked in the country, will take on Young Harris in doubleheader action. So for my the entire team that put this together, student-led broadcast team led by the incomparable Art Berger. I'm Charles McNeil saying good night from Augusta, Georgia.